Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my week number eight must start and must sit running backs for fantasy football in 2021. Inside today's video, we're going to be going in depth at the start of the video into my must start running backs of the week, and then about halfway into the video, we're going to be pivoting into my must sits based upon their matchups for week number eight. But before we can get on into the video, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, to please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure to leave a like on today's video it would help us out a ton and if you would like to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy so without further ado let's get into my week number eight must start and must sit running backs we begin with the must start category headlined by Darrell Williams running back of the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the New York Giants in Kansas City on Monday night football Darrell Williams was a huge disappointment up against the Tennessee Titans having just five carries for 20 yards as well as having three receptions for 30 yards in the matchup. But much of the push away from Williams in the game comes from the poor game script since the Kansas City Chiefs were down tremendous in this game. The Kansas City Chiefs were trying to crawl their way back on into the game, and that is not the kind of game script that you want when you start Darrell Williams because you want a game where the Kansas City Chiefs are at least competitive. They're at least somewhat in the game so that they could run the ball. But up against the Tennessee Titans, that was not the case at all as they were getting blown out for basically the whole game. And then Patrick Mahomes was having to sling the rock at a very high rate. This week up against the New York football giants, you would expect that the game will at least be close. Now the Kansas City Chiefs are on a downward spiral back to normalcy because for the last couple of years, they were one of the best teams in the NFL. They're one of the teams that you would expect to go to the Super Bowl or at least make it very far in the playoffs. But this season, that doesn't seem to be the case. Patrick Mahomes isn't playing all that well. He's throwing all these interceptions and the offense as a whole doesn't look very good now. The defense also looks terrible, right? The defense is also to blame because they let up so many points to the Tennessee Titans offense, but the Kansas City Chiefs were not able to crawl their way back into the game. But going up against the Giants, you just have to think that this game is at least competitive for the Kansas City Chiefs, that they're at least able to be in this game, thus giving Darrell Williams more workload. And I think Darrell Williams will have a huge bounce back after a lot of people fade him due to a poor performance in week number seven. Next up, we got Kenny Gainwell running back of the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Detroit Lions in Detroit. With Miles Sanders out at least the next couple of games, based upon what I have seen, it says two to three weeks for Miles Sanders. Kenneth Gainwell, as well as Boston Scott, will be seeing more work. The Eagles utilize a running back by committee system, but Kenneth Gainwell should be the leader of that committee. Last week, he had five carries for 20 yards, as well as four receptions on eight targets for 41 yards and a touchdown. The key part of the stats is not the rushing because five carries for 20 yards, a lot of running backs in the NFL can do that. But what you're looking for is the receiving upside for Kenneth Gainwell because he had eight targets. That is going to be very hard to find at the running back position. And I do 100% believe that Boston Scott will be utilized on this team. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Boston Scott led the team in rushes. But what I'm looking for is the receiving upside in a game that could be pretty high scoring between the Detroit Lions and the Philadelphia Eagles and if Kenneth Gainwell is kind of the leader in receptions out of the two, which should be the expectation, then Kenneth Gainwell could have a fantastic day up against a not-so-hot Detroit Lions defense. It's funny because Nick Sirianni, head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, finally decides to run the ball in that game. It's like, you know what? Miles Sanders, we are going to free you. We are finally going to let you actually fucking do something at the beginning of the game. And then once he gets the ball, he gets hurt, which sucks. I do believe, though, that Kenneth Gainwell is in the perfect situation to succeed. The Detroit Lions defense ranks 21st in run DVOA, so we should see Kenneth Gainwell put up a solid showing this week up against the Detroit Lions. Final must-start running back before we pivot into the must-sit running backs. We got a Elijah Mitchell, running back of the San Francisco 49ers, going up against the Bears in Chicago. The Chicago Bears are likely going to be without Khalil Mack in this game, but even with Khalil Mack, this Chicago Bears defense is on a downward spiral from greatness the last couple of years you would have considered the Chicago Bears to have one of the best defenses in the NFL right now. That is just simply not the case. Elijah Mitchell was playing amazing last week. Even with the 49ers getting eviscerated by the Indianapolis Colts, Mitchell still had 18 carries for 107 yards and a touchdown. The funniest thing about this game for the 49ers and the Indianapolis Colts were that Elijah Mitchell and Jonathan Taylor had the exact same stat line. They both had 18 carries for 107 yards and a touchdown. Now, I'm not some type of statistic 
mathematician that just knows all of the stats. Has that ever happened before? Has that ever happened before? Because that is very, very interesting. I thought that was funny. But back on in to the actual argument as to why you want to start Elijah Mitchell up against the Chicago Bears. They had a very strong commitment to the run going up against the Indianapolis Colts. And that has been the case all season. It just seemed like it was very up in the air who the lead running back is going to be for the 49ers week in and week out. But it seems as though Elijah Mitchell is now the clear running back on the team. He led the team in snaps with 37. Kyle Juszczyk was in second with 20 six snaps in the game and Jermichael Hasty was third with just 19. If this trend ends up continuing for the San Francisco 49ers and Elijah Mitchell is the clear lead back on the team, then we could see Elijah Mitchell be a must-start running back going forward. But before we can get into the must-sits, I'd like to let you guys know that we have partnered with Yahoo Fantasy this NFL season to bring you guys some great offers. Check out our exclusive limited-time offer, which gets you guys one free month of All Small Plus Platinum. To qualify, you need to be new to Yahoo. Sign up for an account via the link down below. Deposit and play. That is it. Yahoo will send us your name after you play in your first paid contest, and we'll reach out to you via email with your coupon. If you would like immediate access, all you got to do is email support at awesomeo.com, and we'll get you set up immediately. You can also claim a free $10 below, which can be used to enter any Yahoo contest. Make sure to use our DFS tools and projections designed specifically for Yahoo to give you guys your best shot at winning big. Make sure you guys do check out Yahoo, link down below in the description. Now into the must-sit section of the video, and we got Miles Gaskin running back of the Miami Dolphins at the Buffalo Bills. Starting Miles Gaskin right now in fantasy football has been a roller coaster all season long. He starts off the season, he looks great up against the Patriots, and then he's just shitting the bed week after week after week, and then he picks it up against the Bucks. then he has a down game against the Jags, then he picks it back up in week number seven up against the Falcons having 15 carries for 67 yards and a receiving touchdown in that matchup as well. The Dolphins this week go up against the Buffalo Bills that ranked sixth in rush DVOA. Match that with the Dolphins' complete and utter non-committal to running the football and the Bills running up the score likely in this game. The Bills are favored by 14 points. The Bills should be up the whole game. They're not going to be able to run the ball. There's going to be very little time for the Miami Dolphins to establish the run. And the Miami Dolphins' offense continues to just keep moving up and up the pass-heavy teams. They're one of the most pass-heavy teams in the NFL. Going up against the Buffalo Bills, the Dolphins and Tua, they're going to be trying to crawl their way back on into this game. I expect Miles Gaskin to have a not-so-hot showing. He played all right up against the Atlanta Falcons last week, but I just cannot buy into it. Even with Malcolm Brown hurt, and now it just being Salvin Ahmed and Miles Gaskin, I still just don't think I can trust it. Next up, we got Mike Davis running back of the Atlanta Falcons going up against the Carolina Panthers in uh, Atlanta for this one. So with Cordero Patterson's role emerging, Davis has entered the must-sit category. Patterson's snap count continues to just emerge, go up and up and up. He started off the season with a 33% snap share. And in that same game, Mike Davis was at 75. So you're thinking, all right, Mike Davis doesn't have all that amazing of a game in week number one. Cordero Patterson is getting some usage. But, you know, maybe that's just a fucking fluke, right? Maybe Cordero Patterson will just fade away. That has been the most wrong thing you could ever have thought. And I assume most of us thought this last week up against the Miami Dolphins. Cordero Patterson's snap count was up to 73% on the team. And Davis fell to 60%. In that game, Davis had just four carries for 10 yards up against a Dolphins run defense. That is atrocious. They should have easily been able to run the ball with Mike Davis. And that just was not the case. Patterson continues to impress. And Mike Davis continues to do the exact opposite and look very unimpressive so he is best left on the bench at this point the Carolina Panthers defense is pretty solid but that's not even why I'm fading away from Mike Davis it's because they are using Cordero Patterson more and more and I think they're just going to phase out Mike Davis eventually it's clearly Cordero Patterson's backfield final player to discuss in today's video is Damian Williams the other Williams Running back of the Chicago Bears going up against the San Francisco 49ers in Chicago. With Damian Williams coming off of the COVID IR list last week, it seemed as though he was going to be the lead back going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That thought process that I had and that I assume many people had was far from the truth because Williams saw just three carries for five yards and he had one reception for three yards. While Williams was just down in the dumps, he's struggling. Khalil Herbert goes off. He had 100 yards on 18 carries and 33 receiving yards on five catches. So it seems like this is Khalil Herbert's backfield now and we need to run away, detract our hype from Damian Harris. Now, eventually, David Montgomery will be back, and he's going to Thanos snap 
these guys away. It's just going to be David Montgomery's backfield. But while David Montgomery is back, or until David Montgomery is back, I should say, I don't think you want to be starting Damian Williams. I'm fine starting Khalil Herbert in this matchup, but Damian Williams is a no-go at this point. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, we put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 Fantasy Football Championship. While you're down there, hit a like on today's video as well. And follow me on Twitter at NotoriousFNTSY. I love you guys all so much. I hope you guys have a great rest of your guys' day, and I'll be back tomorrow with my must-start and must-sit wide receivers. As always, guys, have a great rest of your guys' day. Good boy!